No man, Mr. President, thinks more highly than I do of the patriotism as well as the abilities of the very honorable gentlemen who have just addressed this House. But different men often see the same subject in different lights, and therefore I hope it will not be thought disrespectful of those worthy gentlemen if, entertaining as I do, an opinion of a character very opposite to theirs, I should speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for ceremony. The question before this House is one of awful moment to the country. For my part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. And in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great responsibility which we hold to God and our country. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country and of an act of disloyalty to the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. Mr. President, it is natural to man to indulge in the illusions of hope. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth and listen to the song of that siren till she transforms us into beasts. Is this the part of wise men engaged in a great and arduous struggle for liberty? Are we disposed to be among the number of those who, having eyes, see not, and having ears, hear not, the things which so nearly concern their temporal salvation? For my own part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no way of judging of the future but by the past, and judging by the past I should wish to know. What has there been in the conduct of the British ministry for the last ten years to justify these hopes of peace and reconciliation with which the gentlemen are pleased to solace themselves and the members of this house? Is it that insidious smile with which our petition has been lately received? Trust it not, sir. It will prove a snare to your feet. Suffer not yourselves to be betrayed with a kiss. Ask yourselves how this gracious reception of our petition comports to these warlike preparations which cover our waters and darken our land. Are fleets and armies necessary to a work of love and reconciliation? Have we shown ourselves so unwilling to be reconciled that force must be called in to win back our love? Let us not deceive ourselves, sir. These are the implements of war and subjugation, the last arguments to which kings resort. I ask, gentlemen, sir, what means this martial array if its purpose be not to force us to submission? Can gentlemen assign any other possible motive to it? Has Great Britain any enemy in this quarter of the world to call for all this vast accumulation of navies and armies? No, sir. She has none. They are meant for us. They can be meant for no other. They are sent over to bind and rivet upon us those chains which the British ministry has been so long forging. And what have we to oppose them? Shall we try argument? Sir, we have been trying that for the last ten years. Have we anything new to offer upon the subject? Nothing. We have held the subject up in every light of which it is capable, but it has all been in vain. Shall we resort to entreaty and humble supplication? What new terms shall we find which have not already been exhausted? Let us not, I beseech you, sir, deceive ourselves any longer. We have done everything that could be done to avert this storm from coming on. We have petitioned, we have remonstrated, we have supplicated, we have prostrated ourselves before the throne, and have implored its interposition to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. Our petitions have all been slighted. Our remonstrances have produced additional violence and insult. Our supplications have been disregarded, and we have been spurned with contempt from the very foot of the throne. In vain, sir, after these things, may we indulge the fond hope of peace and reconciliation. There is no longer any room for hope. 
If we wish to be free, if we mean to preserve inviolate those inestimable privileges for which we have been so long contending, if we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle in which we have been so long engaged, and which we have pledged ourselves never to abandon until the glorious object of our contest shall be obtained, we must fight! I repeat it, sir. We must fight! An appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that is left us! They tell us, sir, we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when shall we be stronger? Will it be the next week or the next year? Will it be when we are totally disarmed and a British guard shall be stationed in every house? Shall we gather strength by irresolution and inaction? Shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs and hugging the delusive phantom of hope until our enemy shall have bound us hand and foot? Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of that means which a gracious God hath placed in our power. Three millions of people, armed in the holy cause of liberty, and in such a country as that which we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations, and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, the brave. Besides, sir, we have no election. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat it, sir, let it come. It is in vain to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace. But there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear, or peace so sweet, as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty, or give me death. Bread.
bread. Yo. Hey. Yo. <laughs> Hey, hey, Balls, balls, balls. I want them in my face. If that printer fails again, I'm going to destroy the human race. It is criminal how big companies charge you full price for cartridges that stop working when they're half empty. But that ain't the worst. Uh-uh. They like to make it so other parts, you know, like the third party stuff, will be incompatible with said printers from these big companies. And it, I mean, it freaking sucks, man. It's just like how uh, MacBook screws are just barely different sizes, so you have to put them in, in their specific holes. It sounds easy, but it isn't. They are designed to directly incentivize par paying for repairs from Apple themselves.
He gets on with life as a torture. He's a kinky kind of chap. He likes cock and ball torture on Sundays. He likes kidnapping orphans in the week. He likes to contemplate cock. But when he starts to daydream, his mind turns straight to balls. Does he love balls more than cock? Does he love balls more than cock? He likes to use words like cocktastic. He likes to use words like ballsy. He likes to use words about cock. But when he stops his talking, his mind turns straight to balls. Does he love balls more than cock? Does he love balls more than cock? He likes to hang out with racist pieces. He likes to kick back with skittles. But when left alone, his mind turns straight to balls. Does he love balls more than cock? Does he love balls more than cock? He's not too fond of normies. He really hates losers, but he just thinks back to balls. And he's happy once again. That was cocktastic. Howdy, y'all. This is Minnesota Johnson here. I'm about to sing you a new song. I love Kentucky. I love Kentucky I'll slow on down Six feet down Grab all of my buddies We'll walk on down the streets Find an old bowling alley We're gonna ride up to that shit and win I love Kentucky I love Kentucky That bowling alley is my bitch. None of my pals is rich, but I still love Kentucky. Oh, I've never been. I definitely go down to the town so long as I'm with my friends. Love you, Kentucky. Maze. <laughs> Fuck. That was bad. All right. No. All right. We good. <laughs> It's the the He's stuck on my weed. His wife. <laughs> they really mess up. Where's my hat? That's perfect. They really mess up. <laughs> I have your social security number. Oh, okay, I guess I'm not a douche bag anymore. Dang it. Hello, I like I love hunting and uh <laughs> Don't. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see it. Oh. Balls, 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 balls. My doctor balls, says there, balls, there's a lump balls, on my balls. balls I ignore them because I know everything balls, about balls. balls. I went to check my garden and the tomatoes, they had balls. balls. My girlfriend won't shut up about her friend's balls. My little brother, he's very proud of his grades in school. Balls are very important if you wish to eat healthy. Make sure you get good balls in school. Don't do balls, they're not good for you. I really like balls. Balls, balls. Balls are my thing, man. Whenever I talk to my friends, they always bring up balls for some reason. All I can ever think about is balls. My dad and mom really like to talk about balls. I want balls for Christmas. I really like balls. Balls, balls. Balls are my thing, man. Balls, balls. I really like balls. Balls, balls. I want some balls. Give me balls for Christmas, man. Come on, man. I need balls. I'm a testicle man. Breaking bars. I'm out of jail. Watch it hail. My cock. It's raining piss. Piss, 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 piss. Piss all over the bedroom floor. Piss all over the desk drawer. 
Why the fuck is there a fucking door in my house? I removed all the fucking doors. My mom is a fucking whore. Ha, huh, bitch, not doing chores. <laughs> Getting rid of the poor. Eat the rich. Your mom's a bitch. Now I'm gonna be high pitched. Lasagna. 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 Piss and balls. 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 Pi
piss and balls, piss and balls, piss and balls, piss and balls, piss, piss and balls, balls, piss and balls, balls and piss, balls and piss, pissing on the balls, balls and piss, piss and balls, balls, piss. Balls, piss, piss, and balls, 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 balls, piss, pissing on my balls, balls, and piss, piss, and balls.